was he doing? He would influence the, uh, the, uh, the youth to join the conflict, to pick up guns. Then he would come on TV and give interviews and say things like, oh, uh, you know, uh, aap youth ko agar police, uh, agar pakad ke jail mein dalegi, to phir youth kya karega? Bandhu ko uthayega. Lekin police kyun pakadti hai? Bandhu ko uthata hai, isliye police pakadti hai. Phir woh ja ke TV pe bolta hai, aapne jail mein dala, to phir youth bandhu ki uthayega. So you can, you can imagine the catch-22 situation that they had put our country into, that they had put Kashmiris into, and they had put India's sovereignty into this catch-22 situation. So after abrogation of 370, all that has stopped. And I think more than the abrogation of 370, it was the masterstroke done by Shri Amit Shah ji of putting all these uh, people who, you, who were putting Kashmiris into a catch-22 situation, putting them behind bars, putting them in jail and not caring a damn about what any foreign media has to say about it, what any NGO has to say about it, because enough was enough. The country had seen enough, Kashmiris had seen enough, and I'm talking about sane and sensible Kashmiris who did not want their youth to become a part of this conflict. They had seen enough. And it was high time that these mischief mongers uh, who were selling the conflict to run their homes, I'm not sure if you're aware that Yasin Malik owns so much of land, so much of uh, commercial space, in Srinagar, which is right now rented out. And I'm not sure if, you, you know, even sitting in jail, his family is minting money. Where did all that money come from? By keeping that fabricated conflict alive. So that fabricated conflict and uh, its narrative has come to an end since the abrogation of 370 so that the Awam can focus more on development and economic prospects in life. That is the biggest change.